Hello, humans, and welcome to another episode of Gen X Gamer. Guys, with today's uh, video games landscape, where you have new games coming out all the time, and uh, with my new busier life schedule, you know, with a baby, being married, and what have you, I'm doing a lot of uh, selecting, right? Being very choosy on the games that I play, and I'm going for quality over quantity, playing a lot more of my retro games when I can. My time is very limited. Uh, given that, you know, I, I was really looking forward to Starfield, in which I played my first impressions of the game. You know, I gave it an 8, and I was, you know, satisfied with the gameplay. I'd been waiting for the game for a long time. It was pretty much everything that Bethesda said it would be, right? For the most part, not everything, but it was okay in my first impressions. I gave it an 8 out of 10. And after I finished the game, I started playing Ghost of Tsushima because I've, I've never finished it. You know, I, I started playing it just before I got married and I've never finished the game. I've been playing it here and there, but what, was never able to finish it. But what I found myself looking at was all the shortcomings of Starfield, right? Now, they're two different games, guys, completely different games. But what the ghost really showed me was... You know, the little details that are not there with Bethesda, right? And we've grown to love Bethesda because of their bugs and what have you. And, and let me tell you, some of the bugs and some of the days were really frustrating, especially when it came to navigation and the game stalling, just turning off on me <laughs> for, for no reason, right? I still enjoyed the game, but I have to tell you, there was a couple of days there with, with, where that uh, really ruined my experience for the day. And exploring the worlds wasn't, you know, <laughs> as charming uh, when you're sitting there just frozen, right? And you're trying to get back in the game and there's just no fixing it, right? Or like the aiming doesn't work and you have to go in and out of different views in order to, to fix it. Uh, probably the most annoying one was the freezing and the, the menu system, right? When, when you try to highlight your mission and it doesn't highlight it and you're trying to find out where you where to go and you don't know where you're going and when i'm playing ghost you know it's little things you know it's a little things a little touches right that that makes ghost of tsushima especially the director's cut such a great game right like the wind pointing in the direction where you should be going little touches like that you know the, the game is just tighter um, and you can see the difference in quality in programming and that really gave me a pause to think. I mean, when are we going to demand more from Bethesda? Are we, are we just okay? Is Microsoft going to be okay just going, well, this is the way they, this is the company culture. And it should be better, right? It should be better. I mean, plenty of companies, whether they're Japanese or, or U.S. companies, make plenty of buggy games. I mean, we can go down the line <laughs> and look at Japanese releases where they haven't put their best work forward but in this case you know you have two different games that have um their ambition ambitious creations right in different settings but they're really trying to give you immersive experiences you know and give you put you in captivating worlds that, that just they offer a unique gameplay to each other right um but you see where the improvements could be in Bethesda I think now that I'm playing Ghost again I would go and give Bethesda and Starfield the 775. I would actually downgrade it because of things they could have done uh, to make the game a better experience or subtle. You know, they're they're not huge, but I think to ask for for a a non buggy uh, navigation menu. I mean, that should be something <laughs> that we shouldn't be having to ask for. You know. Um, and it should be part of a Microsoft project that's already done. Microsoft is a software company. I think at some point they're going to have to, you know, start bringing their culture into these companies. You know, especially where you're talking about these type of releases. Now, I'm not against Microsoft at all and I'm not for Sony. You know, for me, experiencing both companies and experiencing all gaming platforms at the same time really is the video game experience. You know, having the, the experience of a PC and Nintendo along with 
Xbox and PlayStation for me is the complete package. And uh, for me, this is probably the last generation that I'm going to be, you know, full on all of them because I'm just not going to have the time, you know, as my daughter grows, if I had more responsibilities, I'm just not going to have the time to do these type of things, you know, so I'm going to be even more choosy with the games that I play. And uh, I'm not going to be doing a lot of, you know, buy and release unless it's, you know, like the the game pass, you know, have it, if they have it there game one, of course, you know, I'm going to dive right into it. But when I compare these two games, right, and not, not that they're comparable, when, but when I compare the work, right, when I compare the craft, craftsmanship, and I really, I have to say that that really is the difference here between the two games. The craftsmanship shown by the Sony game is just superior to Bethesda's work. And Bethesda is always going to be an endearing company to gamers like myself, you know, to, to the people that um, grew up with these games and, and played these games in the past. But I think as these platforms expand and you have different companies showing you different things, you really, as a customer, start discerning, you know, the wheat from the shaft, as they say, or the wheat from the shaft. And you start being more critical of the little things. Because it's those small things, right, that, that start setting these games apart. You know, whether it's the transitions to cutscenes or, you know, the small touches in, in the navigation systems. I mean, we're not even talking about big things like combat, you know. And let me tell you, I, I wish that if they ever did a Jedi game, they would put the ghost control system on there. I think that would be an amazing to fight with the lightsabers using that mechanic I think would be great right I think that that would be the way the way to go for me because a lot of these battles in in um, in ghosts seem like they should be uh, you know part of the Star Wars lore but when it comes to Bethesda in this particular case it's such a huge world there's so many different experiences uh, and the writing was was better than I expected. You know, the, the, the stories really did take me. And that's why I think this game is going to be around for a while. I think there's plenty of room for expansion. There's plenty of room for, for improvement. You know, if they, especially if they start taking feedback from a lot of the players. You know, because I think most people that played the game enjoyed it. They wish it would be better. They, they wish it would have the craftsmanship, the workmanship that something like Ghost of Tsushima has. All right, guys, that was my conversation here for a little bit with you guys. I hope you guys are having a great start of the weekend. I really do appreciate you stopping by. For those of you who leave comments, thank you so much. Uh, remember, hit that uh, like button. It really helps. And if you haven't done so, make sure you subscribe. Guys, I will catch you on the next one. Take care.